You just went one too far, that's all. Praise God. Pastor, congregation. Congregation, pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, we're going to read in Leviticus. Good to be in the Lord's house. Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 13. And every, notice it doesn't say some, a few, every oblation of thy meat offering shalt thou season with salt. Neither shalt thou suffer the salt of the covenant of thy God to be lacking from thy meat offering. With all thine offerings thou shalt offer salt. Seems pretty plain there. But I have a simple message this morning. Don't forget the salt. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget the salt. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we're so thankful today. Thankful to be in your house. Thankful for your spirit, Lord, your power, your presence. Lord, we are humble vessels of clay and we need the anointing of your spirit move on our hearts our minds draw us closer to you right now jesus and speak to each of us today through the power of your spirit lord we lift you up we thank you we praise you we magnify you thank you jesus amen you can be seated i love studying the Old Testament. Y'all probably have noticed that by now. I particularly enjoy studying the tabernacle because I believe that the Lord in the tabernacle teaches us much about his character. The book of Leviticus, to narrow it down even further, is a book written to Levites on instructions on how to make offerings to God. Mm. And so you look here in Leviticus chapter 2. Let's go back a couple of verses. He says in verse number 11, No meat offering which ye shall bring unto the Lord shall be made with leaven. For you shall burn no leaven nor any honey and any offering of the Lord made by fire. As for the oblation of the first fruits, you shall offer them unto the Lord, but they shall not be burnt on the altar for a sweet offering. And then verse 13, and every oblation of thy meat offering. And so the things that it teaches us about God, when we approach him, we approach him as one who is holy. Amen. And he is telling them as you approach God, this is the manner in which you do it. Now Peter grabbed that same thought and he said in 1 Peter 1 and 15, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. When I looked at my Dake's Bible in this particular chapter, it jumped over and it said, 28 holy persons and things of the law. Holy ground. Holy habitation of God. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. You are a holy nation. The place in the tabernacle is called the holy place. The priests that worked in the tabernacle wore holy garments. They offered holy gifts unto God and holy sacrifices. The anointment of the anointing oil wasn't just any oil, but it was holy oil. There was holy incense. It was a holy sanctuary. The first fruits of the trees, if the first fruit is holy, the branch is also holy. The priests were holy. The tithe is holy unto the Lord. The water was holy. The wave offerings were holy. The instruments and the vessels that the priests used were holy. Oh, 
Well, Brother Wolf, why are we talking about holiness? Because it says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Christ Jesus. He goes on to say in verse number 9 of 1 Peter 2, Ye are a chosen generation. Everybody like that? You like being the chosen generation? Amen. Ye are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. Everybody like that? A royal priesthood. A holy nation. Oh, a holy nation. He has called you to show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness and into His marvelous light. In Romans 12 and 1, Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And the Lord is saying, with all of your sacrifices, you must offer salt. Come on. Wow. Wow. So I began to look at these verses right before it where it said, You will offer frankincense and oil. The verses I read to you, verse number 11, right there it says that you would offer frankincense and oil. Sorry, verse number 1. Leviticus 2 and 1, it says, When you offer a meat offering unto the Lord... His offering shall be of fly, fine flour, and he shall, shall pour oil upon it and put frankincense thereon. Oil and frankincense. And so I thought, well, what does oil and frankincense represent? The frankincense, when you look it up, it is a spice that is offered in incense. It tells you in Exodus 30 and 34... The Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stacta, onica, galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense. Mm-hmm. Of each shall there be like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, temple together pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small, put it of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet with thee, it shall be unto you most holy. And so they put this incense in the side of the holy place right before the mercy seat. And the priest would go in and burn the incense and it would rise up as a savor unto the Lord. Kind of like In Genesis 8 and 20, it says, And Noah, when he came out of the ark after the great flood, he built it an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. Oh, it doesn't matter. How hard we work if we do not have praise and worship. Oh, we've got to have praise and worship. That's what the incense represented as it rose up before God. We're uh, offering the sacrifice of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name. When we come into God's house, we should be like the frankincense, uh, offering up a sweet praise, a savor that goes up before his throne. You should come into God's house and you should say, I'm not just going through the motions. I'm not just here to take up space, but I'm going to lift up my voice and I'm going to talk about how great my God is. He is worthy of our praise. They had to have the frankincense. David said it like this in Psalms 19 and 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. 
Oh, Lord, oh, I want the praise to rise up from me when I come into his house. They had to have frankincense and they had to have oil. They had to bring in the oil. And we know in the Bible, the oil represents the Holy Ghost. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. Uh, What is the use of a sermon if the Holy Ghost is not in it? Uh, Oh, what is the use of a prayer without the anointing that comes from the Holy Spirit? Uh, What is the use of praise uh, unless the Spirit of God is there to give it life that it might rise to heaven? It's not by power nor by might, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. His omnipresent Spirit fills the universe uh, and withers shall I flee from thy spirit I say God let your omnipresent spirit fill me fill me with your spirit Lord let the spirit of the Lord come mightily into my life every praise every sacrifice every time we worship to God we've got to have the oil in it Kind of like Samson when the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he picked up the gates of their city and marched around. Why? It wasn't because of Samson. It wasn't Samson's great strength. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Oh, sometimes I want the Spirit of the Lord to come mightily upon me. I come into God's house and I'm saying, Lord, I want the Spirit of the Lord to come into my heart and I will dance. Oh, sometimes the ropes of discouragement and worries and the thorns and the cares of this life, they're like a rope that is wrapped around me. Oh, but when the Spirit of the Lord comes on me like Samson, the ropes will become like flax when I stretch my muscles and the ropes will fall harmlessly to the ground. Woo! And then Samson looked around and he saw the jawbone of an ass and the Spirit of the Lord moved mightily upon Samson and he began to slay the enemies of God. You've got to have the Spirit. The letter kills. The Spirit gives life. Oh, there's so many churches, they have tired, cold, dead, lifeless worship. I say to you, it's time to put the frankincense in there. It is time to put the oil in there. Woo! Maybe if you don't feel the fire like you should, you should say, God, shut up a fire within my bones. I don't want to quench the spirit. I want the spirit to ignite a fire within my soul. Oh, I want to say like John Wesley, I like it when God catches me on fire and people come and watch to see me burn. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, but don't forget the salt. Don't forget the salt. Salt is considered by most scientists to be absolutely essential to life. Did you know, I I began to study salt, and the word salt actually comes from a Latin word, And it was when they would pay the Roman soldiers their (laughs) salary, their salary, their salary. In fact, the Romans took the salt and they would sprinkle it onto lettuce to eat it. And it was called salad. It's amazing where our words come from. It all comes from salt, salad. The word salad literally means salted. It's from the ancient Roman practice of salting leafy vegetables. Oh, the third ingredient that God mentions here in Leviticus is salt. What does the salt stand for? First and most importantly, the salt is a covenant. The salt is a covenant. Numbers 18 and 19 says, All the heave offerings of holy things, which the children of Israel offer unto the Lord, have I given unto thee, thy sons and thy daughters with thee, by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt forever before the Lord. Salt. 
Every time they poured the salt, uh, they would get the offering ready and they would begin to take the offering and put it on the altar and somebody would say, don't forget the salt. Oh, and as they took out that salt and they began to spring it on there, it would bring back memories into their mind of the covenant uh, that the Lord made with them. Uh, the covenant that said, ye shall be my people and I will be your God. Yeah. Oh, we need the salt of this covenant uh, in every prayer, every praise, every song, every praise is to our God. Every song, every word of worship is to our God. We remember the covenant that he made with us and it gets me excited in the Lord. It raises my soul. Yeah. Oh, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I do not fear the wrath of man. I do not fear the things of this earth. Kind of like Moses, it said, he did not fear the wrath of the king for he endured seeing him who is invisible. Oh, there's times when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me. And if you're not thinking of him today, I would say, don't forget the salt. Remember what God has done for you. It will inspire patience in your soul when you face the trials of life. If you will think about his goodness. Ooh. Don't forget the salt. It will inspire your soul with energy and perseverance when you face difficult trials in this life. The salt speaks of communion, a closeness, and a unity. In the Middle East, it was a token of fellowship. They would invite you over to their house, and if you ate salt together with them, it was a special bond. In fact, you can see in Ezra 4 and 14, I found an interesting scripture. It says, Now because we have maintenance from the king's palace, it was not meet for us to see the king's dishonor. Therefore have we sent and certified the king. Now, in the King James, that's what it says. Allow me to read that in the Amplified. Now because we eat the salt of the king's palace... Uh -huh. It is not proper for us to witness the king's discredit. Therefore, we send to inform the king. Oh, I feel a sense of commitment. Yes. I love him too much to fail him now. Right. He has brought me too far. He has done too much. He has blessed me. He has allowed me to sit in his house at his banqueting table. And I have eaten of his salt. I owe him. We have a covenant together and a bond. And I love him too much to allow him to be embarrassed. There is salt between us. In fact, they would say, he has eaten of my salt. It denoted friendship. And hospitality. And I think of Jesus when he said, Ye are my friends. Amen. Oh, he gave his life for us because he loves us so much. He has brought us into his banqueting house and his banner over us is love. Yes. I love him too much yes. to fail him now. We go way back. We shared salt together. Salt represents sincerity. In Leviticus 2 and 11 it says, Ye shall burn no leaven, nor any honey, and any offering of the Lord made by fire. Oh, you know what salt does? Salt has a way of purifying. Salt will be placed into meat and it will eat away the impurities. And it will allow that meat to be preserved. Salt is a preservative. Oh, and the Holy Ghost and His Spirit is a preservative. Leaven is representative of sin 
and it spreads. We don't want any sin. Honey is a sweetness that appeals to your flesh. Oh, when you come in to make an offering to God, don't be thinking about your flesh. Oh, and when you come in to make an offering to God, don't be allow, don't allow any sin to remain into your heart. But when you come into God's house, you need to say, create in me a clean heart, Lord. Renew a right spirit within me. I want to ascend the hill of the Lord. I I want to stand in your holy place. I've got to have clean hands and a pure heart. I tell you, don't forget the salt. Ask God to reach in and clean up your heart. If you come into God's house and you have on in your heart, you need to lay it on the altar. Make things right. If you want God to hear your prayer, you've got to have the salt. We have Bible for this. Brother Wolf, you're kind of stretching it a little bit. No, Cain and Abel, they came and brought forth their offerings unto the God, mm -hmm. unto God. Abel brought fat portions of the firstborn of his flock. Cain brought the fruits of the soil. The Bible tells us in Genesis 4 and 5, on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Mm. You know, when you look ahead in the scripture, you can go into the book of Hebrews and it'll tell you he had an ingredient missing in his offer, right. his offering. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice mm -hmm. than Cain. Right. Woo, what was Cain missing in his offering? Faith. Abel, by faith had a more excellent offering. He had faith in his offering. He approached God in faith. We have to approach God with a broken, contrite spirit that says, God, just as I am, I bring my offering and I lay it before you. God is not interested in formalistic rituals. God is interested in faith. God does care what is in your offering. God has the power to purify your offering with salt. This is what Adam Clark had in his commentary. Salt is the opposite of leaven. For it preserved from putrefaction and corruption and signified purity and preserving fidelity and they are necessary in the worship of God. Salt eats into the meat and drives away the corruption and preserves it. Yeah. Oh, when you come into God's house, you need to say, Lord, if there's any secret sins in my life, in my heart, I pray, God, that you will help clean them out. What are you talking about, Brother Wolf? I'm talking about repentance. I'm talking about looking at your heart and cleaning it out and saying, God, if there's anything in me that's contrary to you, if there's anything in my life that is separating me from you, God, I want to get it out. Don't forget the salt. Don't just go through the motions and slap it up on the fire. You've got to have the salt in it. Woo. Salt. You need the salt in your life if you want your offering to please God. Why should we desire to please God? Well, that should be obvious because God has the power to change your life. Yes. You cannot please God without faith. Amen. In fact, the Bible tells you plainly it is impossible Amen. to please God without faith. He that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder. I say to you today, don't forget the salt. Let God purify and clean up your life. Uh, there's many people who say that they want to approach God, but they have areas in their life that they allow to remain there. And they will say something simple like, God loves me just the way I am. That's true. He does. 
I found an interesting story in one of Max Licato's books. He's quoting the scripture from Ephesians 4 and 23 where it says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. There you go. You just can't get away from that theme, can you? You were taught to be made new in your hearts to become a new person. That new person is made to be like God, made to be truly good and holy. God wants you to be just like Jesus. He wants you to have a heart like His. God loves you just the way you are, but He refuses to leave you that way. He wants you to be just like Jesus. When my daughter Jenna was a toddler, I used to take her to the park not far from our apartment. One day, she was playing in the sandbox. An ice cream salesman approached us. I purchased her a treat, and when I turned to give it to her, I saw her mouth was full of sand. When I intended to put a delicacy in her mouth, it was full of dirt. Did I love her? with dirt in her mouth? Absolutely. Was she any less my daughter because of the dirt that was in her mouth? Of course not. Was I going to allow her to keep the dirt in her mouth? No way. Let that sink in. God loves you just the way you are, but he's determined to clean you up. Amen, amen. I loved her right where she was, but I refused to leave her there. I carried her over to the water fountain and washed out her mouth. Why? Because I love her. And God does the same for us. He holds us over the fountain and says, spit out the dirt, honey. I've got something better for you. Woo, he cleanses us. He cleanses us of filth, immorality, dishonesty, bitterness, greed. Oh, sometimes I say, Lord, put me back up to the fountain. I need some more cleansing in my life. And if you're approaching God, when you have things in your life, and you're ready to make an offering to God, I would say to you today, don't forget the salt. Yes. Oh, sometimes we look at God and we can say, I can eat dirt if I want to. I can eat all the dirt I want, God. I'm a big person. I don't think I want to change. Maybe you should just accept me the way I am. I would say that is true. You can go on being that same old stubborn person you've always been. No one can make you change. Unless you want to. And I will say, the loss is yours. God has something so much better to offer you. He is saying that I want you to be like Jesus. You don't have to be that same person all the rest of your life. But you can be changed by the power of God. Oh, we preach a life-changing message. The power of His Spirit can create in you a clean heart. If you want it. Yes. This altar is open right now. I would love it if you would approach God and say, Lord, pour in the salt right now. I'm bringing an offering before you, God, and I need the salt. I'm ready to enter into a covenant with you. I'm ready to share communion with you. And I'm ready to have my heart purified. I'm ready to offer up the oil of your spirit and the frankincense of praise. I'm ready for it all to mingle together as I come and worship you today. Let's find a place to pray right now. 
there 